The topic, carrier-based obturation. Let's look at the advantage of carrier-based obturation. First off, it's a centered condensation technique. Okay, the most effective way to move gutta percha and sealer into lateral canal uh, aberrations, fins, webs, loops, isthmuses. Um, it is uh, simple, but weirdly enough, technique sensitive. Easily managed, but if you don't know, you're going to have problems. Uh, you are pretty unlikely to have back any voids when you get done. Um, if you use the uh, thermophil, it has very little taper if you're using wider taper canals. So um, I would recommend that you use a, a more uh, full bodied carrier like a GT carrier or G GTX carrier. And uh, so because they fit so ideally there will never be a void. That right there recommends the technique. It can fill far ahead of the carrier. Okay, now we'll come back and talk about how that comes to our advantage. Um, carriers have a certain tip diameter, certain taper. They have a handle. Um, ben Johnson invented them. It's called Thermophil. And uh, this has gutta percha on it. when it comes out of the package. It also has little length marks. This is 18, 19, and 20. This is 22 millimeters. This is 24 millimeters. The handle is 25 millimeters. They, don't, they only have one length of these. And if you look on the handle, there are score marks a millimeter apart. So if you're in a 30 millimeter cuspid, this handle will go alongside of the cusp tip um, and uh, you can mark on the handle of the carrier what the length is that you want to. So uh, the first thing we do when we take it out of the package is we're going to, uh, actually this hat looks like this. It's got a big bleb there from the, the method of manufacturing. Just take that off. Um, if there's a big bunch of gutta perch ahead of the carrier, turn it around. Sometimes you usually see the carrier on one side. Uh, if there's a lot of gutta perch ahead, you can just t take that off. We're going to want to set the stop within one millimeter. Okay, I set them a millimeter short, others set them at length. That's not the most important thing in this technique. Um, I, my experience and uh, my friend Bob Sharp's experience when he did his research on this was when you have the carrier a millimeter short, the fill is ideal because there's usually a gutta perch and sealer front ahead of it if you've done it correctly. I'm sorry, the first thing here is uh, remove unneeded gutta percha. When you remove this bleb right here uh, and, and even further down uh, the carrier, that's going to be less gutta percha that ends up in your pulp chamber. Okay, if you have a multi canal tooth, it can be a little hard to find the second canal. Um, and if you want to be really clever about it, go ahead and set the stop. Get it, put a plugger, uh, put a stop on your plugger, put it at the orifice level, the pulp chamber floor, set the stop at the reference point, measure it. It's usually 9 to 11 millimeters. And then you simply put the carrier on and measure down from the very tip uh, that length. It might be here. And then that means you can use a blade, cut there, remove this gutta perch, and only have the amount of gutta perch for the canal length. Remember, like a 25 millimeter canal is only usually 15 millimeters long, okay? Um, and then we're going to uh, set the oven cycle. 
Okay. If you're using uh, thermophil or anything with that kind of a taper, that would be gutta core, that would be uh, soft core, all those others. Then you're going to do short cycle and fast introduction, fast placement. Okay, if you have a more tapered plugger like a GT, GTX, then you need to have a longer heating cycle. So I'm going to heat it the maximum and then I'm going to uh, place it to, to length slower. This is about a three to four second placement. GTGTX is more like a six to eight second placement time. Why is that? Because we have a fuller shape in the carrier. There's a smaller vent space between the canal wall and the carrier as we reach final position for the surplus gutta purge to escape coronally. If we, it's viscous material. If we move faster apically than it can escape coronally, it will be shot out as surplus. So we don't really want that slower. And I actually count to myself as I'm setting it. Um, I will put it to mid root in one second and then slow down progressively until I get just to the end. Okay, the next aspect of this is sealer placement. Okay, with carriers, with carriers, as soon as you put the carrier right to the orifice level, here it is, and the gutta perch is alongside of it, down here, it's like this, we have effectively created a seal. It's like a squeegee. And if you have a whole load of extra sealer in here, it's gonna shoot it out the end like, you know, it's gonna look like a shotgun blast. So we can't have not too much sealer. How do we uh, prevent that? By blotting. Apply it and blot. You can apply it with uh, a little micro brush. You can apply it with a paper point. The trick is blot it with two or three paper points afterwards. If you see the paper point is coated with sealer, that probably means it's in filling the lumen of the canal and you're going to have a lot of surplus. When you put the next paper point in that comes out and it has spots of sealer rather than being coated, that usually indicates that there's no sealer in the lumen of the canal, just coating the walls. And you do only need to coat, say, two-thirds of the way up the canal wall, not to the end. Um, the worst thing that can happen is not enough sealer. If you don't have enough sealer in there, then the carrier will go up with a gutta percha, and when it runs out of sealer, the gutta percha can no longer move. And so the carrier continues to the end by itself, okay? Another reason I like to have my carriers a millimeter short is if I fill with a carrier and I see that I'm a millimeter short, I know there's also no sealer there. So I just pull it out, put my shaping file to length quickly, recode it with sealer correctly this time, and set another carrier in place. Um, if you just put a ring of sealer at the orifice level, which some people do, much of the time that'll work perfectly. The uh, squeegee effect will push this little ring of sealer ahead of the carrier in the gutta percha and if there's enough it will get right to the end and nothing simpler. The problem is if you don't have enough, you have a long enough route or you're a little too chintzy in putting the sealer there, you get part way up, run out of sealer and then the carrier's on by itself. The last part is cutting the carriers. Uh, I like to use a preppy burr. It's a non-fluted high-speed round burr. And uh, you spin in a high speed and it, they come in six different sizes. You pick one that is going to be smaller than the orifice you're plugging and then you'll get a nice little dimpled cut out. The great thing about the preppy burr is because it doesn't cut, it will not ding your perfect looking access cavity. Um, you may cut the first carrier after placing it. If you have a multi-canal tooth, 
You're gonna have problems with the adjacent canals because when you cut the carrier with the preppy burr, it's gonna throw some uh, plastic debris around, so you better have paper points in the adjacent canals if you're gonna do it that way. You can also have paper points in the adjacent canals, set one carrier. I, when I set the carrier, I'm gonna hold the handle carefully. I grab a cotton plier, pull the, the stop up to the handle, then I take the cotton plier, grab the this, this stock or the shank of the carrier in my cotton pliers, break it back, bend it back and forth until the handle and the stop come off together, and now I have room. The stop and the, and the handle are no longer in the way for my second, third, or even fourth uh, carrier to come in place. I'm asked what the applicability of carrier-based obturation is. What kind of cases can we use it in? What kind of cases uh, does it not work so well in? If we need a post space, If you do both of those techniques, there's nothing easier than fitting a cone, down packing, separation burst, condense that apical mass, you got to purchase, there's no backfill. And you already have the backfill space roughed out. If you use a carrier need a post space, I'm thinking you're going to be much more successful next appointment or one hour wait to cut off the carrier. If you use prep burr or anything else and you cut that carrier and disturb it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to degrade the quality of the seal. It's going to change the seal. It's going to mix everything up. It's not good. So next appointment or one hour wait. The alternative is continuous wave there if it matters. Now we're going to talk on one of these topics about uh, post or no post. Uh, in most posterior teeth, especially molars, posts are uh, typically not necessary. Um, one application of carry-based obturation that is uh, superior to all other filling techniques that I've ever used is filling past impediments. Okay, you've got uh, most impediments occur in the last millimeter. On occasion, you'll have something like this. I, I had a case like this. And this is, the file wants to stop right here, but you know that you have millimeters, literally millimeters of canal space beyond the impediment. Um, in, in the case I'm talking about, you've probably seen it in my lecture, I was able to shape the whole canal with bent files, but I could never get a gutta percha cone fit past there. And because carriers push some amount of sealer and gutta percha ahead of them if they're done, used correctly, um, I just did the technique opposite of my normal technique. I put it, instead of six to eight seconds, I put it in in three to four seconds. I did not blot the uh, sealer. And um, no gutta percha trimmed off the tip. Okay. And I was able, the carrier came down and banged right here you can feel it, and I was able to seal all three pores of exit for almost a total of 10 millimeters of filling material beyond where we could have fit a cone. Okay? Cone fits, you're going to get a tight seal hopefully at the tip of the cone. You will not fill past it, maybe a little sealer button at the most. It fills very well laterally. Carriers are a different concept of center condensation. They will uh, push material ahead. Normally we would just want the one millimeter. We do it slow, we heat it up to a, a, a higher temperature, um, we d definitely blot the surplus sealer, and um, we take some time, got to perch off the tip of it. Um, when I need more than a millimeter, we change it up a little bit. Uh, when I said at the start of this that the carrier based obturation is very simple to do, but very technique sensitive, you're getting to see that these all cause, these variables all cause different outcomes for carrier based obturation, assuming the shape is correct. The shape isn't correct. You know, it doesn't matter what you fill it with, it's going to fail. Um, one of the other advantages of GT and GTX carriers is the file is the size verifier. Okay, so you don't need to check. You know if these files fit and they made that shape in that carrier or one size smaller. One of the other things I meant to mention about carrier-based obturation is uh, one, even two sizes smaller in carriers uh, can still do a really nice job filling uh, root canals, all things considered. Um, very three-dimensional uh, uh, method. 
Um, I'm a fan of center condensation. I use both continuous wave obturation and I use carrier-based obturation and uh, see very th three-dimensional results.